Hi everybody, welcome back to Just a Dream Away. My name is Tiffany and in today's video I am going through a reading wrap up for the month of March 2021. Um, I had a great reading month this month because it was middle grade March. I read all middle grade and I read seven books which is a lot for me. I know a lot of booktubers read way faster than I do um, but I was really happy I was able to fit in seven books this month and I'm going to go through each one um, starting with my least favorite and working my way up to my favorite so I end on a high note. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is The Brave by James Bird. This was the group read for middle grade March this year and I gave this one star. I hated this book. I already have a video up on this um, that is kind of a rant review um, about a lot of the problems I had with this book. That video does have spoilers because I couldn't really avoid spoilers and still address the problematic content in here. But this is about a 12 year old boy named Colin who um, has been raised by his dad who is white but his mother is Ojibwe and he has a kind of counting compulsion that's never actually given a diagnosis in the novel um, but the author has called OCD in interviews. And his father sends him to live with his mom on the Fond du Lac Ojibwe Reservation in Minnesota. And this is his first exposure to um, Native cultures at all. Um, all he knows about Native peoples is things from school and um, movies, things like that. So stereotypes is really all he knows. And... And then he also um, befriends and then kind of begins a romance with uh, the next door neighbor to his mom on the reservation. Um, and she is disabled as well. I can't really say a lot more without giving spoilers. Um, but the romance in this was way too intense and inappropriate for middle grade in uh, my opinion. I had problems with both the indigenous representation and the disability representation of both Colin's counting compulsion and Orinda's disabilities. I just found so much of the content in this book problematic. And um, there's a lot I didn't even cover in my other video. There's a lot of ableist language in this book, including the slur word cripple. Um, it's just full of native stereotypes and um, doesn't really debunk those stereotypes. It reinforces them. Um, and there is a paragraph in this book about suicide being weakness and cowardly. And that paragraph alone, I think, is so irresponsible of the author, especially since this book is middle grade, so it's for kids. Um, and it's just so damaging and dangerous to equate committing suicide with being weak that just based on that one paragraph alone, I would never recommend this to anyone. Um, and then add in all the other problematic content in this. And yeah, I don't recommend this book. I gave it one star, I hated it. Obviously I can't tell you whether to read it or not, that's up to you, but at least be aware of the issues with it um, before reading it, I guess. Yeah, kind of done talking about this to be honest I don't really want to give this book a whole lot more attention um but that was the group read this year and then next we have Tune It Out by Jamie Sumner um I didn't really care for this book that much either I gave it two stars because there were a few things I did like um but this is about a 12 I think pretty sure she was 12 years old um, girl named Louise who goes by the nickname Lou and she has an incredible singing voice and her mom makes her perform on like street corners and in um, coffee shops and that kind of thing and that's their main source of income. They live out of their truck and move around a lot. Lou has never attended school regularly um, and then they get in a car accident or Lou gets in a car accident. She was the one driving. Um, and Child Protective Services gets involved. So she's separated from her mom and sent to live with an aunt and uncle. Um, and so suddenly she has a more stable home life and um, is attending a private school. Um, and Lou also has an undiagnosed sensory processing disorder. And her mom 
is kind of aware of Lou's difficulties, but doesn't ever really address them or um, help Lou in any way uh, to handle this. Um, and so then once she's uh, with her aunt and uncle, she goes through the process of being diagnosed with um, sensory processing disorder and starts um, kind of learning about her diagnosis and how to cope better. I thought the transition um, Lou made from this like life on the road with her mom to a stable home life was too easy. I just thought like she adjusted way too quickly. Um, and also the sensory processing disorder aspect of this, I did not think was represented well. I have SPD. Um, and I just don't think the author really understands it. The author does not have SPD and she, I don't think she really understands it or understands what the experience is like. Um, so I don't think it was represented well. And there's also quite a bit of ableist language in this book as well. Um, and stigmatiz stigmatization of other diagnoses, uh, specifically ADHD and autism. And the language that's used surrounding autism and an autism diagnosis in this book is really harmful. And um, as an autistic person with sensory processing, di processing differences, like most autistic people have, uh, I was really upset by that. Um, so wasn't a big fan of this one. Um, I gave it two stars. And then next is On These Magic Shores by Shamile Said Mendez. This book was okay. I kind of had mixed feelings about it. Um, it's about a girl who uh, is being raised by a single mom along with her two sisters and her mom works two jobs. So she uh, is often responsible for looking after her sisters and then her mom goes missing. So she has to cope with um, caring for her younger sisters, still going to school, participating in the school play, and trying to hide the fact that her mom has disappeared because she's afraid of social services getting involved. Um, and this book, I thought there was a lot that I liked. I really liked the drama teacher. I liked the fairy magic throughout it. Um, but there was a lot that I just didn't think made a lot of sense or wasn't resolved well. Um, yeah, I just had really mixed feelings about it. I gave it three stars and I do have a separate review video, um, up just on this book if you want to know more about it and more of my thoughts on it. And that fit the strong family themes challenge prompt for this year. And then the next book, The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo, this fit the fairy tale elements prompt um, for the middle grade March challenges. It's not a fairy tale retelling, but there's a lot of uh, kind of that fairy tale feeling in this book with um, references to fairy tales too, like Once Upon a Time and Happily Ever After. And this is about a rather unusual little mouse named Despero who falls in love with a princess and has to go rescue her. This was technically a reread for me because I did read as a kid, but I only had a few very vague memories of it. I didn't remember much about it at all, to be honest. Um, so uh, I did have mixed feelings about this book too. I thought some parts were just so absolutely charming and delightful. I loved how it kind of celebrated the magic of storytelling. Um, but there were other parts that were kind of dark and unsettling um and some of that I thought was okay and other parts were just way too much to me anyway um and um there's this like there's this kind of I don't know what to call it there's this thing where like the narrator addresses the reader <laughs> the narrator um actually like talks to the reader and addresses you as a reader and at first I was okay with that and then I feel like it was just used too much. I wish that had been used a bit more uh, sparingly, especially when the narrator was telling me to look up words in the dictionary. I honestly just found that annoying. Um, and yeah. Oh, and this is only going to make sense if you've read it, but it's not really a spoiler. 
I thought Megary Sal deserved better. Um, there's a character in this that just is treated pretty horribly, and I think she just deserved better all the way through it. Um, even her ending, I thought she deserved more. <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of mixed feelings about that one, but I did think some parts of it were really charming and sweet. Um, oh, my next one I don't have in physical copy. Uh, the next was an audiobook by Tang Ha Lai called Inside Out and Back Again. Um, and this was a uh, historical fiction novel written in verse um, about a, I think she was 10 years old, about a little girl um, and her family as they flee Vietnam at the end of the war in 1975 and um, end up in Alabama. So um, this was... I felt like very different than most immigrant narratives that are in middle grade historical fiction. For one thing, it's more modern, it's in the 1970s, um, so it's not, you know, a century or more ago. And uh, it's written in verse, and the heroine, the main character, she is so feisty. I really loved um, Ha, the main character. She. Uh, she was just really spunky, really feisty. She got angry with the school bullies um, at her new school in Alabama. And yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Um, I would like to reread it in a physical copy because um, since it is written in verse, I think sometimes I found the audiobook a bit confusing. Like it kind of, since I wasn't seeing like the formatting on the page, I think I just got a little confused at parts. And um, a little bit lost, but I'd like to reread it a physical copy, but I still really enjoyed it and gave it four stars. The next is Five Things About If It Andrews by Margaret Dillaway. This one I gave four and a half stars. I did really, really like this one. Um, this is about an 11 year old girl named Ava starting middle school without her best and only friend, Zelia, because she has just moved across the country. Um, Zelia moved across the country. Ava is still in California, Zelia moved to Maine. And they still keep in touch through texting and video calls, um, but you know, it's not the same. They're not going to school together. And Ava has two invisible disabilities. She has an anxiety disorder and a heart condition, um, and she has an ICD pacemaker for her heart condition. Um, so she wants to prove to her parents that she can handle her anxiety and see to do this, she joins an improv group. Um, and in the improv group, she starts to make new friends and build her confidence. Um, and she kind of uh, learns to speak up about the things that matter to her when the improv group's theater is threatened by developers. Um, so this was really cute, really good book. I. Um, did have a few kind of more nitpicky things I didn't like about it, which is why I gave it four and a half stars, not five. Um, but overall, I did really enjoy it. The invisible disability representation in this was fantastic, and it is own voices. The author has both an anxiety disorder and the same heart condition as Ava. Um, and I thought this one was really great. Um, and then my favorite book of the month, last but definitely not least, the Sea in Winter by Christine Day, and I loved this book. I gave this five stars. It was my favorite read this month, for sure. Um, and this is about a 12-year-old indigenous girl named Maisie, um, who is a dancer, and ballet is just her whole world. Between um, auditions and training and um, performances, rehearsals, all of that, ballet is her life. and. She has a knee injury right now, so she can't dance now. She um, is going through recovery and physical therapy, but right now she can't dance. And she's really struggling because of that. She feels very um, lost and unsure of what her future holds. Um, and then her uh, family takes a road trip along the coast to visit sites that are of significance to her mother and stepfather's native communities. Um, and so this fit the travel or journey challenge prompt um, for this year's middle grade March challenges. Um, this was just so beautifully written. 
it was very uh much more character driven very introspective there's not a lot of plot um through the story it's just more about Maisie's journey um and I loved the family dynamics in this I thought they were fantastic um the indigenous representation was absolutely great um and I thought the way mental health was handled in this book was just so wonderfully done too. Highly recommend this one. Absolutely love Christine Day's writing. Um, I loved her first book too. This is her second, but that was uh, The Sea in Winter by Christine Day. Five stars for me, for sure. Favorite book of the month. Um, so that's it for this month. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, let me know if you've read any of this, I read, blah, 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 read any of these books and what you thought about them, or if there's any that you want to add to your TBR now. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to see more. Um, until next time. Bye.